Welcome to the FOS studio. I am Alex Schiffer, and I'm joined now with recently retired NBA player Gordon Hayward. Gordon, what's going on? Hey, man. Thanks for having me. What brings you to town? You're an Indiana guy in the Big Apple. Yeah, well, uh, I've got a movie coming out. Um, so I was here to do the premiere. The movie is called Notice to Quit. Um, mm -hmm. It releases nationwide September 27th. Um, and so it was set in New York, and we thought we should do the premiere here. So that's, that's why I'm here. Have you always been a big movie guy? Was it something you got into more as a pro with all the time on the plane? Just what's your origin with all this? Yeah, I mean, I've always been into movies. Uh, we would always watch movies as, as a family growing up. Um, you know, when I first came in the NBA, you, they passed out like por portable DVD players on the planes. That's a throwback. It is a throwback. With the selections of CDs, you're kind of combing through the book and seeing what's available. Uh, so it wasn't as much watching movies then. Everyone was playing cards. Uh, but you know, last year, as, as we moved on throughout my career, now everyone has their own iPads, their own laptops. You've mm -hmm. got almost endless content. So everyone's watching movies and shows and all that. So certainly a big, big movie, big show guy. And uh, you know, it's, it's something that I want to do now that I'm done playing basketball is tell stories and kind of uh, make movies. I was going to ask you, I looked up the movie a little bit myself. It's an uh, actor turned realtor, you know, has a daughter come back into their life. Uh, I'm not Egbert and Roper, but it sounds a little bit like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood almost kind of meets like Big Daddy. Just what can you say about the film and uh, yeah. what was it like? Just seek anyone's advice as an executive producer as to how to go about this all and whatnot? Yeah, I mean, this is, I've never done this before, so certainly was a sponge just soaking up everything and all the information and really just trying to enjoy the whole thing. The movie is, um, I'd say it's like a family comedy drama. Um, certainly follows kind of uh, this real estate broker in New York trying to sell these apartments and uh, you know his daughter he's got a daughter from an ex-wife and he's getting evicted from his apartment she's being evicted from his life t by telling him they're gonna move um, to Florida and so it's kind of 24 hours following them in New York on a miserable summer hot day in New York and he's kind of trying to figure out work-life balance and uh, really what's important in life. So it's, it connects with a lot of people, which is something that I think is really cool. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I think a lot of people will, will really love the movie. Like I said, we had the premiere yesterday and people laughed, people cried. And if you can do that in 90 minutes, I'd say it's a pretty good day. Yeah. yeah. Have you done any acting? Or was there any thought of you doing a, a cameo in this? I don't think you have one. I've done commercials before. Mm -hmm. And if... I mean, once you do the commercial, you, it doesn't look like it's that hard, of course, because actors are so good at, at what yeah. they do, they make it look easy, but I'm a terrible actor, so I, unless I do acting lessons or something, maybe I can do some cameos, Yeah, like some Stan Lee, just be in the corner of the yeah. scene or something like that. I was going to say, you came into the NBA after Entourage was on the air, that was like the one where that's, it feels yeah, like every player had like a five second, I know Steve Nash had a cameo in Entourage, it was a lot of who's who of like random yeah. athletes. I'll have to tell the, the my partner and the writer and director, Simon, just to stick me in a scene somewhere. Yeah. He did say I'm tall, though, so maybe I could sit down in the scene or something. Yeah. You just retired. Did you go into last season knowing you only had a few more left? You know, there's always the talk of once the guys were thinking about retirement, you know, maybe that's when it's time to call it quits. Just what was your process like of... Did you have interest during free agency? You know, what did you when the thunder got knocked out? Was that when your mind was made up? If you kind of take us through how you arrived at yeah. your decision for all this? Um, I mean, it's been something I've been thinking about for a little while. I've I've got four kids and they're getting older. And uh, last year was my 14th year, which is crazy to think that that, that time goes by so fast. Um, but it was yeah, there was definitely interest in the off season, and uh, you know, I thought about all the different teams and places I could have gone and. Uh, for me, it's it was I was at peace with where I was at in my career and kind of wanted to move move forward and do different things. And my kids are getting older, so I'm starting to miss some of their events and um, sporting activities. And uh, I felt like I wanted to be with them more. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's kind of the reason. I mean, it's it, I think as an athlete, you never know exactly when to retire. Yeah. Um, thankfully for me, I was like a choice. It wasn't like I uh, was forced to because no one wanted me or got to have some sort of major injury where I couldn't play anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, I know I obviously I've had a lot of injuries, but uh, the option was there to play, and I just decided to, uh, you know, just call it quits. At the movie premiere last night, you know, this is the time where media day is starting up for a lot of teams. A lot of guys are back in market. This is your first time, to your point, going back to college where this time of year you're not at a basketball practice or getting ready for a season. Just is it a weird feeling? And did you think yeah. about that all last night, the movie premiere, it's, where it's, it's like, I'm very doing weird. this. Yeah. yeah, it's so weird. It's like the first I've been telling everyone it's like the first time I'm gonna have a legit fall where I'm not like I can watch football like a normal person mm -hmm. and um, you know lose money betting on games and 
uh, do the whole fantasy thing. And so it's, I'm excited for it. I mean, dressing up for Halloween, you know, usually we're either playing or you got a game the next day and even holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, you know, you can go into those holidays just more relaxed. So I'm yeah. looking forward to that. With your retirement, you know, we talked about this, a little bit this off air, but you had the Players Tribune to announce your uh, your move from the Jazz to the Celtics, and then obviously you announced your own retirement. You know, it's it's been a, a post mortem for the Woj era ending recently. Just curious yeah. for you know you being able to do that in a time where the news breaking stuff was always crazy, and you know you tried to have an announcement embargoed, but then that sometimes would leak out. Just um, right. you know, you were uh, you could have been one of the last Woj bombs, but instead you got to announce it yourself, and I'm just curious if that was. Uh, if you thought about that at all with recent events, yeah, it's that it's it's in today's world, it's hard to keep anything secret. Um, yeah, and it does seem to get out some way, in or shape or form or, or another. And so, uh, Woj was a good friend, and he always did right by me. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, he's I wish him nothing but the best in his retirement. But certainly, it's it's nice to be able to control kind of the narrative and what I wanted to put out and with my retirement just wanted to do something simple and so posting something on Instagram seemed like the best way to go. I want to take a walk back through your career if we could. You had sure. a number of stops and you had a lot of interesting things happen along the way. Just to start with your most recent stop with OKC, you know, you joined them as like the older guy, the vet at a time where they were like a young and up and coming team trying to make their announcement, make their arrival. You know, you got Shea, you got the Jalen Williams, you got Chet. Uh, they come into the season as a team that could obviously Maybe this is the year they make the conference finals or get back to the finals since the KD Russ era. Just, you know, you're only there a little bit, just your time in OKC and some of the guys they got coming up. What were your thoughts? Yeah, on that? I mean, OKC is, they have a bright future for sure. Um, reminded me a little bit of when I was in Boston with just the talent that we had when I was there. Um, just young guys who are, who are, you know, already there and already super impactful. Shea's, you know, probably been a top five player in the NBA for the last two or three years. Um, and they did finally put it all together, and, and uh, you know, they, uh, I think we fell short uh, because of some experience, which that's, mm -hmm. you just got to go through that. Yeah. Um, you, you can't, I mean, it's something that you just have to do, and uh, so I think next year they should be really good, too. They picked up some good additions. Uh, they stole one of the bigs from, from New York. Yeah. Um, picked up some good additions, though, so. Uh, they'll be they'll be a threat for sure in the West. Yeah, watch where you say that. On uh, we're not too far from the Garden. I think there's still. I don't know if you saw the Mitchell I, Robinson report that he's going to miss time. So that. Oh looked, really? Yeah, he's I out to start not. the season. So that that well, uh, I, Hartenstein I, departure looks a little bit tougher now. It, yeah. it does. Yesterday at the premiere, somebody came up to me and was saying, you know, talk to your guys over in OKC. They stole. I know he was beloved here. Yeah. Uh, which he's. Uh, I mean, he is a hard worker and does all the little things for you. And you need those guys if you want to win. Yeah. You came from to OKC from Charlotte, where you were there a few years. You know, you were there when the team got sold. You know, you missed out. They have that practice facility coming. They have the arena renovations. You just missed out on all the... Yeah, yeah. Out of curiosity, you know, obviously coaching changes happen every year. Ownership changes are a lot less frequent. Just how much of that is a conversation in the locker room and, and something on a player's mind when it happens every now and then, every few years, and it's something that might not impact you, you know, depending upon when the sale comes through and when, right. when the changes are implemented? Was that something that was on your mind at all when you were in Charlotte? Uh, so the last couple of years, it was just, the, you know, as we talked about getting things getting leaked, I mean, it, the word was out and uh, we knew it was about to happen, didn't know when. Um, and then when the sale does go through, it's like, well, it's, it's still gone through, but nothing's going to change for a little while. Um, we actually played the season and last season and really no changes until I think basically I got traded and then it started to be like, all right, the GM, new GM. Um, you know, we're kind of basically going to go through another rebuild. They're going to do all these renovations, all this stuff, um, which I didn't get a chance to be a part of. Uh, but hopefully they can start to, you know, kind of pick up that franchise and turn it and put it, get it going in the right direction. Um, you know, I love my, my time in Charlotte and uh, we, we still live there now. That's kind of like the place where we call home. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm, I'm rooting for that franchise. And then we talked about the Knicks a little bit. The Knicks have the Villanova reunion going on. Yeah. You kind of were the big college reunion in the NBA in recent years just with you reuniting with Brad Stevens when you went to the Celtics. By no means a one-to-one, -one, four college buddies and uh, and you and your coach. I want to say you never played with Shelvin Mack in the NBA, right? I, I did. I played you with did. him in Utah, actually. That's right. That's right. I remember he was with the, um, the Wizards for a while. That's right. That's, so you've done this a little bit, but just, you know, since you've had it both with a coach and a, uh, and a teammate, what's it like going from Butler with these guys where, you know, the stakes were a lot lower, you guys were like the ultimate Cinderella story mm -hmm. to 
the NBA where there's it's a business, there's trades, there's stakes on the line. Just what was that adjustment like both with Brad and Sheldon? Yeah, I mean, it's it certainly is a business. That's the biggest thing. Um, you know, when you're in college, you're kind of just like playing ball with your friends uh, because you're still you're going to class with them. You're hanging out outside of, uh, you know, the games in the court and the practices. The NBA, it's it's you're kind of it's I mean, it is your job. And mm -hmm. uh, it was it was different playing for Brad in both. I think we had both grown up a lot. I mean, when I played for Brad, I was, you know, 18 years old. And then the next time I played for him, I had at the time two kids. Um, you know, he had changed. It had been seven, seven years, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was just different. Um, you know, I think I really enjoyed my time in Boston as well. I mean, mm -hmm. it didn't work out exactly the way that we thought it would. A lot to do with my big major injury. Mm -hmm. um, and I will say it was some of those you have some conversations that are just that are just tough because of because it's a business and so when i called him and told him i was leaving and going to charlotte like that was that was a tough call to make mm -hmm. um, but me and brad have a great relationship and you know i know that he's always in my corner and and vice versa and they're doing i mean they're they're doing pretty well i'd say i was gonna say what was it like to uh, two part here what was it like watching them win a title given that you played with a lot of those guys when they were a lot younger and still coming right. into their own and you played for Brad Stevens, you were not part of GM Brad Stevens. Right, so right. just him making that transition so successfully and also with those guys finally putting it all together. Brad is, no, I think no matter what he decides he wants to do in life, he'll be successful at it. That's just the type of person that he is and it's a lot because of the preparation and the hard work that he puts into everything. Um, but certainly great, I still have great relationships with a lot of people that are within the organization and. I'm so happy for Joe Missoula. He was an assistant when I was on the team, and mm -hmm. um, you know, I just I wish them nothing but the best. And I, look, I mean, they're set up again to to do very well this year. Um, so, uh, rooting for those for those guys for sure. And then just when uh, we were reminded of this yesterday, when you had signed with the Celtics initially, that was during the whole Danny Ainge's son running for Utah yeah, yeah, Congress yeah. thing and everything. Did you ever have a laugh with his son? When you were up in Boston like that, like, hey, I'm sorry, my free agency somehow impacted yeah, we did. local politics. Just we, how, I imagine it was an interesting tongue-in-cheek conversation. It was, and Danny and I would laugh about it too because it's his son, you know. So he's, I'm, and he's the one that's stealing me from from the state, and or at least what everyone in the state felt like. And we definitely laughed about that. It's it's funny how sports and pol politics can kind of get intertwined and stuff. I only got a couple more for you. You know, you're doing this movie now. Yeah. You know. Some guys go into coaching. I know you said you had four kids. Some yeah. guys go into investing. Just what else are you going to do in your post-playing career? Now that you talked about gambling, and now that you can do that legally and uh, right, right. and uh, watching football and whatnot, I guess what else do you trying to uh, do now that you have the time for it? Yeah. So um, I mean, the kids take up a, lot, a large portion of my time. Um, I want to be there for them and be around. Uh, speaking of kids, I'm, I'm also going to be releasing a shooting tool. Uh, kind of how do you shoot a basketball, so a training tool within the next couple of weeks here. Um, so you have to be sure to follow my socials and stuff and you'll see it. Um, we have Paul George, Lexi Hole from The Fever are also on board and so I'm really excited about that. Um, it's called Form and uh, you know other than the movie and that, and that right now that's taking a, a lot of my time. Um, but you know looking forward to just kind of being normal too and hanging out and just doing normal things. I don't know how much you can say about the tool, but is it, uh, is it like a physical thing? Is it like a video thing? Just Yeah, it's a physical, I mean, it's a tool. It's a physical object that you use to help you shoot and uh, kind of like um, a training tool that you can use and teaching kids the proper form of shooting a basketball. And, uh, you know, I think it's, I used it throughout my last couple of years in the NBA and just kind of to stay sharp. And I think it's mainly more for kids starting out and people starting out, but professionals used it, um, teammates used it, and uh, you know, I think it'll be a big hit, so. Interesting, you have a patent on that? We do, we do, we have a patent on it, and uh, like I said, it, that should be released in the next couple weeks as well, so. Interesting, shooting's interesting to me having covered the NBA because no, there's no one set way to do it, every guy has a different thing that works for them, but there is some things that carry over universally. Well, that's, that's kind of what we, I talk about with this tool is I think there's a lot of non-negotiables with shooting. Mm -hmm. uh, like you said, you can, do it a, you can do it basically any way you want if you practice it enough. Yeah. But I think there are some um, things when you're shooting a basketball, it's like your elbow's gotta be in, um, your wrist needs to be aligned, you wanna shoot the ball straight. Um, yeah. Or anything. So there's there's probably better ways to do that. Yeah. It's funny, you know, uh, I remember once watching Joe Harris having covered the Nets, who was obviously one of the league's best three-point shooters. Yeah. 
and he was during a career low for, from three, and a front office executive brought his son to watch Joe warm up despite the stretch he was in because of his feet placement, of where he was catching the ball, and talk about the non-negotiables, just it always struck me how no matter how bad he was playing, he just had certain things that executives would bring their own kids to watch him right. do because of how integral it is no matter what your form is, et cetera. Well, he's, I mean, Joe is a great shooter, but there is there is so much of it, too, when you're talking about in-game shooting besides the form. You want to give yourself the best chance, and I think mm -hmm. that's where your form comes in. But so much of shooting, too, is it's a it's a head thing. It's a mind thing. You've got to have confidence. Mm -hmm. You've got to be in a rhythm. There's a timing aspect of it. You know, so there's like, there's so much that goes into shooting, but shooting's at a premium uh, yeah. right now. If you can shoot, you can play, you can find yourself a spot on the court. And I think, uh, you know, Steph is, is obviously a huge example of kind of transforming that. And, um, but yeah, I'm excited about that and, and when that's going to release. Get you out of here on this. Looking up your high school, you went to high school with a who's who of Major League Baseball players, especially pitchers. Drew Storen, right. who I believe was taken 10th overall right after Steven Strasburg by the Nationals. Uh, Lance Lynn of the Cardinals, um, the Reds catcher, Tucker Barnhart. Tucker yeah. Barn did, how, if you could go into either, I know you played a little bit growing up. Did you overlap with those guys? Do you have stories of someone who you wouldn't yeah. have expected to go pro? Just so shout out to Brownsburg, Indiana, um, big baseball town, big sports town, really. Uh, we also had a MLS player in my grade. We had an NFL player the grade below me. I obviously played in the NBA, so lots of lots of uh, professional athletes. But um, specifically in baseball. So my cousin played on the you know the Little League World Series. Yeah. So my cousin was two years older, played on Little League World Series with Lance Lynn. Wow. Um, and then a, and then a, and then two years passed, and the grade above me, which would have been Drew Storen, also went to the Little League World Series. Um, wow. So they were kind of like destined from a young age to do big things, and they obviously kept it going. And so it's it's been fun to watch all of their careers, and even running into them sometimes on the road has been fun. That's awesome. Gordon Hayworth, enjoy your retirement. Good luck with the movie. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks, man.